What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. For our next topic, uh, LeBron James and JJ Redick did a podcast uh, yesterday, something they recorded, it seemed, about a month ago when the Lakers beat the Clippers in that game where LeBron single-handedly outscored them. At least that's kind of the way it was framed at the beginning of the show. Uh, My initial takeaway on the show in general was just it was something that I think is important for the the overall uh, scale and scope of of basketball coverage because JJ Redick, in my opinion, is the very best in the world at what I do for a living, meaning like covering the NBA on a national level. I think JJ is the best at it. Uh, he obviously does more than what I do as well. Cause he does color commentary and, and additional stuff like that and uh, debate shows and, and things like that. But specifically within the realm of basketball analysis, I don't think anybody does it better than JJ. And then LeBron James is arguably the most famous basketball player in the world. Uh, at least active basketball player. And he uh, brings an incredible amount of IQ to the table, an incredible amount of cachet to the table. You know, specifically what stands out to me is they put up a ridiculous number on YouTube in that in that show, and it wasn't about anything urgent. Like, it wasn't like we're going to break down what happened in last night's game. It wasn't like we're going to break down this team or that team. It was just generic, in a vacuum basketball conversation. And I think, like, getting that kind of viewership for that sort of, uh, of like, non-urgent topic is just a testament to the power, the star power, that those two guys... Uh, bring to the table and obviously namely LeBron, but JJ JJ has reached a, a certain level of of notoriety in his field as well. And so I, I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of really good conversation. I I'll be honest with you. I'm I a part of me wishes that this was something that was more consistent and more focused on the actual day-to-day NBA because I think it be could be incredible. Uh, but it's early. So we'll see we'll see what ends up happening uh over time. I wanted to hit on a couple of specific things that they talk about talked about though. So at the beginning there was a conversation about the three things that make a good basketball player. And there was a specific point that JJ made about something called that he calls competitive stamina. And I think this, this was really interesting to me because this is a very specific reason why I harp on something called habits, right? The, there's a reason why I, I've talked about it with the, the Suns and the Kings a lot, like Suns, Kings, and Mavs a lot as of late. And what I mean by habits is like a habit is something you do unconsciously. A habit is something that is so baked into your routine that you just it, it's 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 almost easy to do because you're just accustomed to doing it. And the reason why I think habits matter so much is when you get into any sort of situation with adversity, whether it's like uh, uh, a game that's slipping away from you or some sort of emotional adversity or whatever it is that's going on, your habits will carry you through those moments because like like anything that you're not consistent in when adversity hits, those will be the first things that you stop doing. Right. And then like your true core nature will reveal itself in those situations. And so you need to take your day-to-day routine and make it into a habit so that that is what you lean back on when the shit hits the fan for lack of a better term. Right. And so that like when, when JJ talks about competitive stamina, that's literally that's literally what I, I I think of uh, think of when I talk about habits. So specifically, for instance, like um, for me, I remember shooting workouts. I used to do them relatively casually when I was in my early twenties, and then I heard a lot from younger KD talking about doing your practice reps at game speed, and that was something that like when I first started doing was hard because like you're in an empty gym. And like, I have this shooting workout that I do. That's like a combination of like four or five drills. And like, I'll like, I'll be, uh, I'll give you an example, like a rip through one dribble pull up drill that I, that I do every single day. And like, uh, so I, I pitch the ball out to myself at the top of the key and facing away from the basket. And then I reverse pivot and I rip through as hard as I can. And then I do a left, right takeoff into a pull up jump shot. And then I do the same thing going left until I make five going both ways. Then I move it back with a counter move. So I rip through and then do a counter move and then take off going left and vice versa. Right. And that drill, like when I was doing it casually, it was easy because, you know, I just reverse pivot and you know, push the ball out in front and I elevate and it was just kind of, yeah, almost like treated it almost like a warm up. And like all of a sudden you realize you're practicing a shot that you'll never take in a game because guess what? Never in a basketball game do you get to casually rise up into a jump shot. Like if you're going to take a one dribble pull up, if you're going to shoot any sort of off the dribble jump shot against real basketball players, 
you got to be moving. You got to be moving with real pace and speed. And, and and like, even for a guy who's as big and athletic as I am, like you, you still have to have a certain amount of pace that you bring to those shots to get them off against good defensive players. Cause again, that's the thing, like six, six and six, 10 wingspan. Like, like I have that's tall compared to like the average pickup game maybe. But like, if you go play against, you know, go play at an open gym at a, at a college somewhere, go play against real college athletes when they come back to town or overseas athletes when they come back to town. And all of a sudden there's a lot of wings that are, that are six, six and six, seven and six, eight. And suddenly you need to have a certain level of verve that you bring to the table to be able to get your shot off. Right. And so when you try the drill with like real game speed and I'm reverse pivoting and I'm ripping through as hard as I can, I'm covering a ton of ground and I'm elevating. It's hard. It, it hurts your body when you're in your mid thirties. Like it. It takes a certain amount of like uh, of like uh, of of exertion that's hard to do at the beginning of a workout. And when I first started doing it, it was really challenging. But over the course of the weeks, it became a habit for me. And now, like I literally don't know how to do it any other way. And now, when I go up to the gym and I go to do those those drills, like I bring a certain level of intensity to it, just because that's the only way I know how to do it. It has become a habit for me. And so as a result of that, like I, 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 I have this like routine that I stick to every single day. And like, even when I don't do it, it feels weird. Like if I happen to skip a shooting workout on one day because of whatever I'm busy with work or my wife and I are, are, uh, have some sort of function or we're out of town or whatever it is, like, it just feels weird. Right. And like, to me, like that, that when JJ talks about competitive stamina, stamina, that's what I think about. I think about establishing habits and making it so that specific behaviors of yours become habitual. Even sim something simply like like breakfast. I used to never have breakfast and it was such a stupid thing because I'd deal with these crazy energy swings throughout the day. And now I have a five-part breakfast every single morning, three over medium eggs. I've, I take oatmeal, a banana, a yogurt, and an athletic greens every single day in the morning, first thing in the morning when I wake up. Really hard at first. Now it's a habit. So now like every morning I wake up, that's just what I do. And that's helped me so much with energy levels throughout the day because I just get this really big, you know, kind of versatile breakfast every morning that that kind of checks all of those boxes, right? And so the second part of it is what fuels a person to build those kinds of habits? Like what is it that allows a person to get to that point? And Couple of things. Love of the game. Both LeBron James and JJ Reddick talked about love of the game. I think that is a key element because obviously, like, it's easy to work on shooting drills. It's easy to get in the gym and, and work on your game when you love basketball because, like, even something still like, the only example, the counter that I'd give is like when I was a kid and I, when I was in high school and I was playing high school football my freshman and sophomore year, I hated, I hated practice. So every day when you went to practice, you're just in survival mode. Now, mind you, I was in Arizona, so it's hot as hotter than hell, and uh, and you're outside in the sun, and it and, and you know every everybody who's played football knows exactly what I'm talking about. But like practice sucked, so it was hard to kind of get up to do it, right? And like, but basketball, it's like when I, I, I today uh, today because I'm covering Celtics Bucks, I am not going to go to the normal pickup run that I go. So this afternoon, I'm going to go do a shooting workout. And like, that's going to be fun for me. I'm going to put my headphones in. I'll listen to a podcast or listen to some music. And like for 30 to 45 minutes, it's going to be enjoyable for me to do a workout because I love basketball. And so like that's, that is a, that is a, a foundational concept. Secondly, competitiveness to me, this is, I talk about this on the show a lot, but separating love of the game from a uh, hatred of losing. Cause I do think those are two very different things. I think there are people in the NBA who love basketball, but don't hate losing enough to kind of push themselves to that next level. And so I think that 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 is an important element of it. I think the greatest basketball players of all time are all people who both love the game, but also hate losing. And then finally, a general lifestyle of excellence. And so what I mean by this, I wanted to use this as an opportunity to shout out a friend of mine, uh, Sam Beskin. He came out of um, a Tucson uh, uh, playing at Catalina Foothills at the school that I coached. He, he was coaching or he played there before I started coaching there though. Uh, but I met him through the program. And he went on to play at Stanford, and then he transferred from Stanford to play at uh, Colorado School of Mines. And he's been there this year, and uh, this year is his final season there. But uh, I worked out with him uh, over the course of the last three summers and, and got to know him personally. And I've never met a human being that uh, approaches every single task in his life with the same level 
of intensity and discipline and focus and competitiveness. And, and like, cause I'm the exact opposite. I'm like anything involving my job, which has to do with basketball. I'm locked in. I'm giving it everything I got. Anything having to do with basketball as a player or as a coach, I'm handling it with like a hundred percent of everything that I have. But like, if I wanted to go, if my wife was like, you want to go run a couple miles with me today, I'd have a really hard time pushing myself through that run. If I went on a hike, I'd have a hard time like pushing myself through that hike because like I'd be, I'd get through it, but I just, I, I have a hard time personally, like being really engaged in things that I'm not passionate about. And like the Sam, my buddy, Sam, like he just, no matter what it is, whether it's his diet, whether it's school, he was a scholar athlete selection in the Pac-12 when he was at Stanford. Uh, I like even like he, he told me a story about how he was in a run on campus with a with a guy who was a marathoner at Stanford and like and like he got his butt kicked in the first lap and so he like pushed himself on the second lap and like actually managed to keep up with the guy and like and I'm just sort of, I'm so impressed by just his overall like uh, uh, ability to get his his mind and body to peak efficiency and output regardless of what he's doing. And I think, I think all of the best basketball players and best, whatever it is that they do and whatever their profession in the world, those people, it's not just that they love their profession. It's not just that they're competitive. They have a general lifestyle of excellence. And like that, that sort of thing to me is, is something that kind of goes under the table uh, or that gets kind of like uh, not given the appropriate level of regard when we talk about these guys. Next, can basketball IQ be learned? This was the third thing that uh, that uh, JJ Redick put on his list of things that make a good basketball player. And LeBron and uh, and JJ had kind of a back and forth about it. And LeBron talked about some of it being kind of like uh, you're born with, and 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 JJ talked about some of it that you can be that can learn. Um, I I tend to agree that it can be learned. I separate basketball IQ from the natural gift, which is the ability to process information quickly in the heat of the moment. That to me is the the like the natural part of it, right? So like when I talk about guys like LeBron, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, you know Chris Paul, uh, uh, you know Trey Young, like the, the, all of the really really high level passers in the league, it's a couple of different things. It's not just basketball IQ uh, having to do with understanding reads. We'll talk about that in a minute. A lot of it is a human superpower in that in the heat of action. When lots of shit is going on around them, they can quickly interpret information and make decisions on the fly. That is the, that to me is the natural gift that pushes them over the top. That is not learnable. That is something that you're born with, right? But the basketball IQ piece is learned, in my opinion, meaning like the actual nature of the reads. So for instance, let's just talk about pick and roll. So like... If I'm running a ball screen on the left side of the floor, I have a, sh- and we'll we'll talk about this not in the sco- uh, concept of five out, but rather in four out. So I've got a guy standing in the left corner as a shooter, standing in the right corner as a shooter, standing on the right wing as the shooter, and I've got the guy coming up to set a ball screen so I can get to my right hand downhill. In that situation, you can learn what the reads are. So, for instance, defenders icing the screen, meaning he is denying me access to the screen and forcing me towards the baseline side. I can do a couple of different things there as a read. I can either just take that baked in driving lane, draw the help defender and make a read from there, or I can use it as an opportunity to set him up for the screen. So a hard dribble to the left, then a counter dribble, and then try to use the screen. Basically trying to get him onto the opposite side of you so that you can use the screen. If he's in a trail position, if I come off of the screen and the guy is not digging down off the shooter on the right wing and the big man is far back, and I can get some separation from the guy off the screen, I'm taking the three. If the big is back and they're not digging down off the wing and the guard is chasing over the top and he's doing a good job staying attached, I need to continue to work downhill. And if nobody else comes, I need to get a floater off before I get to the big man. If the big man steps up, that's where the pocket pass is there. If the big man stays back, but there's nail help, meaning the guy coming from the wing, all I need to do is make the swing pass to the wing. If the big man comes up and the pocket pass is not open because they're tagging from the weak side off of the guy in the corner, it's the skip pass to the corner and uh, 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 to hit that shooter or if he cuts along the baseline. You can learn those reads through film study and just understanding the game. And and literally anybody, even, even someone who's never played basketball in their life, can learn basketball reads. But 
in the game, what applies those things is a combination of skill, meaning like the ability to dribble and pass and like actually handle a basketball, right? But the second part of it is to be able to quickly process those things. There are lots of guys in the league who understand the reads, but can't pick them up quickly. When you see one of your favorite players in the league go into a ball screen and miss a skip pass or miss an easy read, it's not because he doesn't know that read exists. He knows it's there. He just hasn't processed it. In the heat of the moment, he struggled to see it all, right? And th there's no shame in that because literally it's like only a handful of guys at the top of the league that are that gifted at processing those things on the ball that quickly, right? Now there's a middle tier there in terms of processing speed and IQ. And this is where we get all the high IQ role players and things along those lines. Those guys, they can make reads relatively quickly in their specific role. And there's a ton of value there as well. But when I'm talking about the stars at the top of the league, it is kind of rare to have a guy that can quickly process those things super quickly every single time, get the ball in the right spots every single time. Um, Two other quick ones before we move on. LeBron's point about centers naturally wanting to drop towards the rim on help on drives, even if they're guarding shooters. This is I just thought this was funny because this is something we talked about on the show uh, uh, over the last few weeks. Specifically, I think it was when we were talking about the Cavs game, when uh, Cavs Celtics, when Porzingis kept leaving uh, Dean Wade open on the perimeter. I talked about the natural inclinations of, of centers and their tendency to want to drop back towards the rim and to be in a position to help and like how sometimes a player's natural tendencies will go against whatever the game plan discipline is and so lebron made a point about how like when he sees when he sees in a switch situation a center guarding the shooter in the strong side corner and he's on the strong side wing lebron will just drive really hard towards that right hand side because he knows even though the center is not supposed to help off the strong side wing or strong side corner he knows he wants to because it's his natural inclination and i thought that was really really fascinating because like again like there are these like little tendencies that you can capitalize on and that's a great example of one is just like centers have a tendency to want to help so if you drive in their general direction, you might be able to get an open three just simply baked, uh, based on that center's specific tendencies. And then finally, LeBron and, uh, and JJ had a, a long conversation about the Warriors beating the Celtics in the 2022 finals because of IQ and not talent. I just thought that was interesting because it's LeBron James saying it. And that's something that uh, me and Colin talked about a, a, a ton heading into that series and after that series. We both said... Before that series, we thought the Celtics were the more talented team, but that we expected the Warriors to win on the strength of their experience and on Steph Curry being the best player in the series. And I 100% agree. LeBron, LeBron went on this rant about how the top four teams in the league, uh, when you get to the conference finals, those teams are all generally very good and all have lots of talent. And what separates from those four is IQ. And I, I thought that was really fascinating because, again, like if margins get really tight at that point and what swings margins are little tiny details and teams that have high IQ don't make as many mistakes in the details. <laughs>